Yo guys, what's going on? It's Lewis here with Crypto Elite, and today is going to be the market update of the week. And things are popping off pretty uh, significantly right now. So maybe we're about to get a big move up. Also, in these market updates, I am now giving out little bits of technical analysis lessons. So if you're interested in learning about technical analysis, you will find value in these videos. In my last video, where I talked about insane gains, how to find insane trade setups, I went over market structure, market structure breaks, and a couple other things that I use when getting into trades. Back here, I had a little update on trading ranges. Back here, I think I did an update on market structure. And today I'm going to do a little bit on ranges again, but that's going to come after the market update. And so expect all of that and more after the intro. Okay, so starting off on Bitcoin on the weekly chart, you can see that last time we plotted out the weekly range from this week of uh, September 12th. And you can see that the following week after that, the price fell below the weekly range and closed below the weekly range. And now we are one day into this new week and the price is already back within the range above the previous low after the weekly swing failure pattern. So this is very bullish in my opinion. Hopefully, just from a weekly perspective, we'll get a move back down here or somewhere into an order block on a lower time frame before making our own way up to at least $20,955, maybe $21,000 and also potentially all the way up to $22,800. That is what I am hoping for. And so I went ahead and I plotted out the weekly range from last week because it has only been one day and we are already above the previous week's highs, which is very good in my opinion, because I believe that typically the first day of the new week tends to set the direction of the following week or of that week. And so we're already above the highs. So I would love to see a little bit of a retracement before I move up. And I do also want to jump right in to the S&P 500 and just say right here, we have got to the very bottom of the previous low and we had a weekly SFP. Although I guess technically this wasn't a weekly SFP because this week hasn't necessarily, um, or this week has not completed yet. However, on the daily chart, on the daily chart, you can see that we did have a swing failure pattern below the low and then a rise back above it today, right now, actually, just over the past few hours, I'll go down to the four hour chart. And this literally happened within the last four hours where the price came down and had a little wick underneath the low, which was definitely a stop loss hunt into the sell stop liquidity that was down here for the whales. And then they shot it up. I know it's only 1%, but this is the S&P 500. So that is a uh, that is a lot. And this is on the four hour chart. However, if we go to the daily chart, you could even or I mean, the 12 hour chart, you could see that the lows back here, the closes, also were ran and now it is above those previous closes back here, which is what I was talking about with the bigger picture on the previous lows. And this is pretty bullish as well, because not only did we have the SFP on the 12 hour chart and on the daily chart right here on this previous candle, but now we're having the SFP on the entire range. So the very, very bottom of this, of these candles down here, Technically speaking, technically speaking, it would be more bullish if it came down here and then shot back up and then did something like this because this would be these lows down here. However, how many people do you think are thinking that we're going to, you know, come down to those levels? How many people put their buys right here, right at these lows of the previous swing lows. I bet a lot of people did. So it would be pretty ridiculous if the price just shot up here and left everyone who was planning on buying down there in the dust. And considering that we have a very a fairly bullish RSI and stochastic RSI and MACD, it wouldn't it wouldn't be too um, outlandish to think that we that this right here was the local low. Oh my gosh. Also, this is huge. This is the daily chart. And where is my little tool right here? Look at this down this right here 
to down right here. And what do we have? This right here to this right here. This is the definition of a MACD bullish divergence. A lot of people say bullish divergences are X, Y, and Z, and they don't know what they're talking about, or they are oversimplifying bullish divergences. Bullish divergences, technically speaking, a true bullish divergence on the MACD is when the histogram, which is these areas, these lines right here, go down, come back up above the zero line, and you could see that it came back up above the zero line denoted by this green dot right here, along with this very, very faint, very, very small blue arrow or a blue histogram right there, that tick. And then it comes back down below the zero line again. However, it comes back down, but not lower than the previous MACD histogram low. And at the same time that it does this, the price makes a lower low. So the MACD histogram makes a higher low after going above and then back below, while the actual price action makes a lower low. And that is exactly what happens. And for further explanation, as soon as we get this arrow, you can see how this tick right here is a lighter, excuse me, it's a darker red than this one. So this is a darker red than this one. This is how I um, create, I customized this MACD profile right here so that I could see this because it is not the time to go into a trade until you get this first tick. So based solely on the MACD, and this is the MACD bullish divergence, which is ex in my opinion, extremely powerful, this would be the time to go in as soon as you get this candle, upward candle momentum after the actual bullish divergence. So that makes me bullish overall because the stock market and the crypto market are very, very correlated. We're getting this nice uptick in the stock market. I showed you and talked to you about the swing feather patterns that we've happened that have been happening on the stock market. And on Bitcoin, it is um, obviously moving up because of that. So I would love to get in on a retracement and aim for, aim for much higher. Now, looking at the market structure of Bitcoin, you could see we had the high up here, made a low, high, aka a lower high, a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. And then we had our first higher low right here on the 12 hour. But we never broke through the previous high, which is what we need to do in order to confirm that we are having a shift in the trend. So we made another lower high right here and then an equal low or maybe just a little bit of a higher low. And now we finally have the break in the market structure above the previous highs, which uh, we're right here basically, um, unless you're counting this wick. But even if you are counting this wick, we you, you'll count this wick and then we made a market structure break on that also. So that is really, really good on the 12 hour. And I would want to set up a long position somewhere in this entire region if I am looking to go long on Bitcoin. So if I'm going to put it on trade, I am looking at the one hour time frame now and I'm seeing the market structure and this is the market stru uh, structure shift right now. The RSI and stochastic RSI are just a little bit too high for me, um, my liking right now. So I would want to see the price t uh, come back down. Typically, I want to see it come down to the 61.8. I'm not really sure if it's even going to reach there, though. So maybe this would be a better trade. Um, so what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack my buys basically in this in this area, in this entire area. This is where I'm going to be stacking my buys and I will target this area up here at just under 21,000 because that is the 61.8% of this entire move down. All right, so that was Bitcoin. Now let's get into Ethereum. First thing is that we will plot the weekly range, the previously uh, weekly range out, which is right here. This obviously was not a very big one. And unlike Bitcoin, which did actually surpass the previous weekly range ethereum has not yet done so so there possibly might be more potential for ethereum 
If you want to see which one has more potential, Ethereum or Bitcoin, you can also always go to the Ethereum against Bitcoin chart and plot it out to see which one you think might have the more uh, more potential. And if, he, if this chart, the Ethereum against Bitcoin chart is at a support, then it definitely has or most likely has more potential than Bitcoin does. Um, if this is at the resistance like up here, then of course, Bitcoin has more potential than Ethereum does. But honestly, if the Ethereum against Bitcoin, Bitcoin chart is up here, I wouldn't want to be in the markets at all, or I would simply want to be shorting the markets. So this right here is a decent level for, for the Ethereum against Bitcoin chart. Um, it's nothing that I could really say, okay, this is a, this is a major support or anything like that. Um, it's also, it's not a major resistance, so it's sort of a no man's land. So for me, this is pretty much anything, anything, uh, could happen. Maybe if we take a Fibonacci from the bottom to the top, it might have, uh, some confluence. Well, not really. It's more just hovering around the 50%, um, on this, on this. Fibonacci, maybe if we bring it down here, then yeah, it's just above the 50%. So maybe it's bouncing off the 50 right now. Either way, I typically prefer Ethereum uh, over Bitcoin because of the potential gains. So let's go back to the Ethereum chart. You can see that it came back down on the weekly time frame, tagged that bullish order block absolutely perfectly. And if I go actually go to the weekly time frame, then you will actually see the bullish order block was right here, the last down candle before the up move that broke the market structure. And this right here was uh, was tagged at $1,220 and then it went back up. So that was absolutely fantastic. So let's go down into the lower time frames and see if we can see a good setup. Okay, so first thing that I notice is that on the weekly time frame, obviously we said that it came down into this big bullish order block right here and then shot up. But check this out on the lower time frame, on the 12 hour time frame, it actually came down into this bullish order block right here, which was the down move before the up move that actually broke the market structure and it tagged it literally perfectly. So you, technically speaking, you could have put on a trade that was like this and that would have been obviously fantastic to get in down there and your TPs would be probably around here plus here plus potentially the top of the range. So let's keep on doing a little bit more analysis and see if I could see something else. Okay, well, looking at the market structure, you can see we had our high right here, followed by a low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, and we had our first higher low right here. And then we never actually broke market structure to the upside. Uh, right here was uh, the next high. And then we came down and we had another equal low. We'll call this low the same as this low. And now we finally, just right now, broke the market structure to the upside, which is great. So let me just draw this out. And so technically speaking, if you want to get into a trade, the best setup would be getting in on this bullish order block right here, the down move before the up move that broke the market structure. So you can essentially put on a trade right around 1,331 and have your stop loss be down here at around 1263 targeting. Um, literally right here would be fine because this is actually, let me uh, think about this really quickly. Yeah, I would probably have this be my target because this is right underneath the 50% mid range. And this is also at these highs down here, plus this support turning into a resistance area. It'll most likely come up a little bit higher, but just to be safe, I'd probably want to take my profits right there. However, this is on the 12 hour and honestly, I'm not sure if we're going to come back down here. It's only 3%. So let me check the lower time frames. Maybe there's a better trade on there. So on the lower time frame, you can see that we were obviously in that clear downtrend, just down, 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 lower highs, lower lows. Consistently, we hit the major 
supply uh, the major demand zone the major support area of interest right here and this will this looked very promising because we had a swing failure pattern right into the supplies right into the demand zone right into the support area of interest and then we made higher highs so and and higher lows and we broke market structure right there so i am sure that a lot of traders were looking at this and said okay i'm definitely getting in and they probably got in right right around here or or maybe right around here and they probably got in and they most likely targeted somewhere up here or maybe even the mid range. And this right here absolutely destroyed a ton of traders, I am sure. And what do you know, it came down right down into the support, right down into that demand zone again, did the same exact thing where it created a bullish swing failure pattern in the support zone and then rallied up and started breaking market structure right here. So this is this is the second entry was somewhere around here and this was the first entry. So most people got stopped out of their trades during this cascade right there and this was clearly just to suck up liquidity, which means that this breakout, in my opinion, seems a little bit more justified because now the market makers got the liquidity from all the people who bought down here and who bought the retest down here, the little bit of the retracement. So I would definitely feel more obligated to get in. And looking at this, I would say that Right here, we have the resistance, we have the resistance, we have the resistance, we just simply could not bust through it, and then boom, we busted through it. So I think that to be on the safer side, getting in somewhere around 1360 is pretty good, but also it's two, it's two and a half percent. You know, it's depending on your trading style, is that is that one to two percent? to possibly miss out on a run up worth it because this run up it might not it, it it might not come down and this is what separates a lot of traders so <laughs> i'm not going to go too deep into it but i think that a lot of traders first they don't know what the hell they're doing second off they know what they're doing but they get into early aka back here the third traders they know what they're doing they wait for the perfect setup and then they wait, but then price runs away and they don't go in because they don't understand the psychology behind it. The psychology behind this, in my opinion right now, is that this right here was created to get a ton of people to put a ton of money in the market. This right here was created to suck up all of their liquidity before actually running up. And now we most likely are going to run up and I don't, I could see a potential, I could potentially see it coming back down here. But if we're going to, if we're going to be targeting up here, then why not just start stacking your orders down? Why not just start buying right now and then stack your orders down? Because you have to understand what is actually, you know, going on behind the scenes. And there are times to buy, there are times to hold off, and it's really up to the discretion of the actual trader. Okay, so that was Ethereum. Next up on the list is XRP, none other than the most infamous cryptocurrency out there, XRP. Right now, last week, it had a huge, huge jump. And I just wanna say this, look at how freaking accurate this was. This was my buy zone that I plotted out all the way back in 2021. Get with me here. This is so freaking accurate. It is crazy. So technical analysis, absolutely amazing. It This was the consolidation zone, the accumulation zone before the huge move up. And this move was freaking 75, uh, excuse me. F wait, was it 75? Yeah, this was 75%. Absolutely crazy. 
79%. And if you take it from the absolute low, this was a 94.94% gain so far, which is freaking awesome. Obviously, you don't get it at the exact bottom, but if you get in at the 88% retrace, that is freaking awesome. And personally, I think XRP is one of the best cryptocurrencies to be going into. And I am in dollar cost averaging into XRP every single day because I believe that if there is the winning verdict for Ripple in that lawsuit, then XRP will it could potentially it could potentially hit 86 cents uh that is yeah that that does not seem far off to me so i am stacking my buys for xrp i will stack them all the way down to 35 cents and and obviously and even below even below 35 cents i think xrp now is the time to touch it i have not touched xrp in years years and years and years never never touched it because it because all these other coins have outperformed xrp and you could know you know if other coins outperform the coin that you're looking at by doing a simple calculation such as typing in the name of your coin in trading view like xrp and then typing in ethereum and then you will see xrp against ethereum and you just click that and you can see that XRP has gone down against Ethereum since December of 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. How many years is that? Four years, nearly five, or I guess it's four years because it was really December. But yeah, it has been like Ethereum has absolutely crushed XRP. However, because there is the narrative around XRP happening right now that I do think that XRP is a is a good buy and um, I am definitely stacking in my orders. If you listen to my previous video, by the way, which is right here, time to buy XRP, that was six days ago. That was six days ago. Hello. Not only that, but if you looked at my actual Twitter, September 20th, XRP, it's time, September 20th. Let's take a look at the date of September 20th for XRP. And that was right here. That was right here at 39.40 cents. And you could have gotten in on this retrace, which would have granted you 20% right now, but all the way up here, 42% gains in just a few days. Hell yeah, not only, so I had a video on it, I had a, my Twitter on it, and obviously in the VIP, I had so many things about it. Let me just check real quick. Yep, 918 started talking about XRP, how well it's been holding up in the market in the VIP chat room. And I was, you know, I literally said maybe some news about the case is coming out soon. This was before people were really talking about it because people started talking about it on the 19th, on the 20th. But uh, I mentioned it on the 18th and the price for XRP on the 18th was literally 34 cents, somewhere around there. And it went up 50, 60, 60 percent. 60 freaking percent and actually if you got it if you got in at the uh order block it would have been up 64 percent so that is crazy in just a few days so there are some perks to being in the vip <laughs> and not only that but loop was another one that i that i got into and that went up 100 percent it literally doubled in value since since i got into it so that was uh, some very big wins in the VIP. I'm actually doing doing very well, uh, which is awesome because I've made back so much of the losses that I incurred during this bear market. I made a ton of that back over the last week and hopefully we'll make a ton back more over the next couple weeks. Um, so yeah, let's keep on going into XRP, see where the best time to buy into it. Like I mentioned, I'm dollar cost averaging into it regardless because uh, there's that narrative of the case is way too big to not be exposed to XRP at all. Obviously down here was the best, but now we have, you could see this giant support turned into resistance and then it turned back into the support and it sprung back up. So clearly this giant support slash resistance area is the best area to get in, but that's if the price even comes down there. I don't think the price is gonna come down here. The next best plight, uh, uh, price to get in would be right here, which is right at, let's see, this is the 12 hour bullish order block. So at 40, 0 0.434, that is the best entry that I could see right here. And 
it, will it come down to there? I'm not even sure if it'll come down to there. But um, if it does, I will definitely be stacking in a lot more orders down there. And you can also use the Fibonacci, take the Fibonacci from the bottom to the top and see that the 38.2 is at 0 0.44945. So that's a great place to stack some in here. So I'll, I'm going to stack some in here, going to stack some in down here um, and right here. And if it comes down here, I'm going to be going in extreme. I'm going to be going into XRP super, super heavy if it comes down to just over 40 cents. So um, that's definitely where I would want to be stacking into XRP. And actually, uh, the the Fibonacci is right here. So let me rephrase that. I'll be going into XRP. I don't know if I'll be going all in, but I'll be going very, very heavy in XRP if it happens to come down to 0 0.4123. But right now, my overall game plan for XRP is to just continue to dollar cost average into it every single day and have my big buys stacked a little bit lower at the 50% and then at the breaker and then at, excuse me, at the order block and then at the 61.8. Uh, now, just a little bit more alpha for you guys. I do believe that the highest probability um, trades are probably going to be the ISO uh, 222 compliant cryptocurrencies with XRP obviously being the most obvious. Um, but these are the other ones, IOTA, Hedera, Quant, Algo, XDC, XRP, and then Stellar. And all of these have higher potential for gains in my opinion. I did sell 50% of my quant in my trading portfolio previously, um, just a couple days ago at $120, $124 on this spike up here. And I do want to get back in, but it is at a fairly big resistance area. You can see this entire, this is a support zone. This whole area is a big support zone. So I really don't want to be jumping into something that might spike up a lot more, but it's at the resistance. It's at the support, excuse me, not the support. Sorry. It's at the supply. It's at the supply zone, the supply zone. So there's a lot of supply up here. This is the resistance. I don't want to be jumping into something right here. I would much, much rather get into it. If it comes back down to right here, this whole area, especially if it comes down to right there, that's the sweet spot. The sweet spot is, let me actually draw this out right here because not only is this at the bullish order block, but it is at the diagonal support as well. Oh, and it's also at a big support resistance because you could see resistance, 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 support, support, resistance, 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 and so most likely support. So let me throw this on here and actually put a trade on like this just in case Oh, that, that the RR is pretty, is not the best. It's not the best, but I mean, the, the, um, the stop loss is, has to be pretty, pretty low, but this is on the daily. So maybe on a lower time frame we can get a better trade setup on a lower time frame. And I would honestly, maybe if I do this, that would work out. And to be honest, I'd probably do this. I think this is fair. I think this is fair to say. Yeah, this is definitely fair to say. Even if you move the diagonal a little bit lower, it still is just under the diagonal. So I think that makes a lot of sense. And this would be the first target, but I would be targeting higher because I am expecting things to happen due to the whole ISO compliance and uh, you know SEC lawsuit and Ripple lawsuit coming out. But like I said before, with it at the supply zone right now, the resistance, the RSI, stochastic RSI, the MACD, all of these in the overbought territories in the type of market that we're in with the economic headwind, the macro environment, this is, I can't get myself to buy quant right now. Okay, and for the last part of this course, I want to go over how you may decide to play different ranges and how I personally set up my range range tool, quote unquote, in TradingView. So I use the Fibonacci and I take the Fibonacci on the weekly time frame 
from the previous week. So let's say that this week ended and this is the close of this week. So now we are waiting for the next week to start. What I would do is I would take the Fibonacci from the bottom to the top if it's a bullish candle or from the top to the bottom if it's a bearish candle. And the settings for this particular Fibonacci are 0, 0 0.5 as the midline and 1. So this is on the weekly time frame to get a sense of what the range is so that when I go down to the lower time frames, for instance, the daily time frame, I can see what to expect for the next week. So this is, let's call this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And by simply glancing at this, what I would most likely expect would be for the price to come somewhere back up into this range and then fall back down or fall back down into this range somewhere down here near the bottom. And so this was taken from a weekly perspective. And if I thought that perhaps this was a better range because this is the market structure range, then I would take this. But I'm basing it off of originally the weekly time frame. So you can change the range based off of the market structure, but you can use the weekly time frame or you can use any time frame really as the basis for where you plot your original points. So if we press the play button, we could see what happened. And so if this was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then this was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of the following week. And you could see what happened. You could see that we went above the range and then we eventually ended up closing back into the range and then going back below the midline, tapping it and tapping it. And if we go down to the 12 hour chart, you could see that the top of the range acted as a nice support area. And when it broke, it broke down fairly significantly and it ended up bouncing pretty much off of the 50% of the range. And so before this week actually happened, what I would have done is put a red box just to denote the fact that this is the resistance. And then I would have put a green box down here like this to denote that this was the support. And if I saw a short setup happening in this zone right up here, then I would have taken it. And if I happen to see a long setup happen in this zone down here, then I will take that. And in order to see those, you have to wait until the price reaches this area, look at the market structure on the lower time frames, and then play that. And so in this case, on the four hour chart, I could see that the price was at the bottom and it created a high, a low, a higher high, higher low, and eventually made a higher high. Then it created a higher low, but right here, it created a lower high. So this is what we call a fail swing or a failure swing. Not the same as a swing failure pattern, but this is a fail swing in that this high was not as high as this one, which denotes that there may be some slowing down of momentum. And of course, we wouldn't know that until I would say about right around here, because previous to this candle, this was pretty much a consolidation zone. And if we go down, into the one hour, you can see that first off, we had a deviation where it came above this resistance, aka the top of the range, and then fell back down below within the range. So that's the first indicator that possibly this move up was over. The second indicator that this move up was over was the fact that we made a lower high right here. As you could see, we made a high, a low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, equal high, equal low, higher high, higher low, and then finally we made a lower high. Then we made another lower high and then another lower high and we made consistent lower highs. So your spidey senses should be going off when we had first that deviation and then we started making lower highs if you didn't get in on a short position on the retest of this bearish order block up here right there. And then finally, even after all of this, we eventually did have the market structure break to the downside where we made our first lower low of this entire move. You can see low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, and then boom, we created a lower low right here. And this candle broke this market structure right here, this low, 
and it also broke this market structure aka this low down here so what do you do you would want to get in a short position or you would want to sell on a retest of a bearish order block or of the resist of anywhere within the resistance zone literally anywhere right up in here and the price did come up and tapped it the more ideal entry obviously would have been up here but in these type of situations, you probably want to get out a little bit before that. You probably want to front run that. And so this is a great area to enter into a short position. And what would you do? You would target the midline of the range, which is the 50% right there. And you could also target down here, which is the low of the range. And that would have ended up being a great trade. So I just want to see how this plays out. And so I know that that was a very quick explanation of using the weekly time frame range and then adjusting it based off the market structure and then using that as your analysis or for your analysis for the next week while the next week actually plays out. But this is definitely something that you could do in order to become a better trader and you can experiment with this on your own. And once I finish creating the Crypto Mastery Course version two, of course, I will have a lot more explanations in there on how to actually trade ranges. And so I'll you updated on that as I get closer to the release date. And I think I'm going to wrap this up here. It's been just over 30 minutes. I hope this was enjoyable. I hope that you learned something. And so remember, keep on stacking those stats, keep on making those gains, and I'll see you in the next video.